DETV News is powered by DART, Delaware's transit service, moving forward. New tonight, Delaware's gun laws are upheld in court. Plus, some school districts in Delaware will be restricting cell phone use next school year. And we are happy to have Nick Allisandrini with sports back at with us. Those stories and much more coming up tonight on DETV News. Good evening and welcome to DETV News. I'm Matt Ford. Thanks so much for joining us this Tuesday, July 16th. Here's what's making headlines tonight across the first state. Delaware is facing historically high temperatures this week, joining a large swath of the country under extreme heat. The National Weather Service in Mount Holly, New Jersey, forecasts temperatures rising well above historical averages of 69 to 88 degrees. An excessive heat warning, which we're all feeling, is in effect for Newcastle County until 6 a.m. tomorrow, Wednesday. Highs will be in the mid to upper 90s, with heat indexes ranging from 103 to 108 degrees. Yes, you heard that correctly. And in other news, Delaware's gun laws have been upheld. The U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit ruled Monday against the Delaware State Sportsmen's Association challenge of state gun law reform. This decision upholds a district court's order denying injunctive relief. The Delaware State Sportsmen Association, along with other plaintiffs, argued the laws violated the Second and Fourteenth Amendments. The laws in question ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines and raise the purchasing age for most firearms from 18 to 21. A district court judge denied an injunction in March of 2023. The plaintiffs appealed, but the appeals court agreed with the lower court's assessment. Now, judge Stefanos Bibas stated that the evidence did not show irreparable harm. Delaware Attorney General Kathy Jennings praised the decision, emphasizing the importance of gun safety. And millions in federal dollars are headed to public schools here in the first state. U.S. Senators Tom Carper and Chris Coons, along with Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester, announced that Delaware will receive two and a half million from the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to expand health care resources. The funds will enhance facilities, recruit health care providers, and reinvest in school-based resources. Schools are uniquely situated to help Medicaid-eligible students access the physical and behavioral health care they need. Each lawmaker praised the investment for better student wellness, hoping it will improve their educational journeys as well. And speaking of schools, several Delaware school districts plan to restrict student cell phone use during parts of the school day. Smyrna school district officials said that they consulted educators and examined some studies, deciding to have students place devices in a designated area during instructional periods. School issued devices will still be used for learning though. Smyrna officials will evaluate feedback and data throughout the school year to adjust the policy if needed. Parents are asked to prepare students and teachers are encouraged to limit their own cell phone use as example. Brandywine High School will require students to place personal devices in designated pockets during class time. Officials believe this will reduce distractions and improve focus. Quote, this change promotes better classroom focus. That's according to a recent post from the Brandywine social media. And the Milford School Board has postponed its decision on a policy regarding controversial topics in classrooms after two hours of public comment. Parents, teachers, and students oppose the policy, arguing it restricts free speech. The ACLU of Delaware, a vocal critic, said the board's policy restrictions are concerning. The policy was introduced following a complaint from the parents of a Jewish student who felt threatened by a Black Lives Matter flag in a classroom. The board says the policy aims to promote free thought and speech. They plan to reintroduce it after further discussion among board members, teachers, and the community. No date for that has yet been set. And other news, the Brandywine School District employee John Arnold 
has been arrested on charges of repeatedly raping a five-year-old girl. Court records reveal the 47-year-old was previously accused of sexual misconduct by another juvenile and an adult, though wasn't criminally charged for those incidents that happened in Maryland and Florida. Back in 2021, he was sued in Florida, resulting in a settlement last December. Arnold is held in a Delaware prison on multiple rape charges from an investigation that started this month. He allegedly assaulted a five-year-old girl since at least November of 2022. Arnold, an emotional support therapist at Lombardi Elementary School, has no evidence of student victims. The investigation began after the girl disclosed the abuse to her camp staff, prompting a report to the Delaware Division of Family Services. And two people are dead after a car crashed on Gills Neck Road down in Lewis late last night, Monday. Police say a BMW was traveling at a high rate of speed shortly before midnight. The vehicle left the road as it approached a sharp curb, striking a wall, a tree, and a metal fence. The car apparently caught fire and the blaze spread to a nearby home, causing some extensive damage. The occupants of the home were reportedly able to escape uninjured. Thank goodness, both the driver and passenger of the BMW were pronounced dead at the scene. Their identities will be released once their families have been notified. And state police are asking for your help in finding a man they say a suspect shot a driver Sunday evening south of Milton. The motorist, a 27-year-old Laurel man, was critically injured. Troopers responded to Cool Spring Road near Fisher Road shortly before 8 o'clock at night for reports of a Ford Explorer that crashed into a utility pole. The driver had been shot in his back and was taken to a nearby hospital. An investigation revealed the victim was driving on West Springside Drive when a person fired several rounds at the Explorer. After the shooting, the Explorer hit a utility pole. Detectives identified 24-year-old Tamarius Perry of Milton as the shooter and obtained a warrant for his arrest. Anyone with information on Perry's whereabouts is urged to call 911 or Delaware Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-TIP. 3333. And a wrongful death lawsuit against Milford police officers who killed a mentally ill man back in 2022 was settled for a six figure payout to his children. Public records reveal Brandon Roberts died after, corpor after officers Corporal Nigel Golding and Patrolman Patrick Carpin responded to domestic dispute calls. The settlement, similar to others involving Delaware police officers, involves a gag order. Robert's partner warned dispatchers of his mental health issues and armed state. Despite this, police shot him eight times, leading to a lawsuit ex alleging excessive force. The case was settled for $775,000 with payments to Robert's children beginning at age 18. The city insurers covered the settlement, reflecting ongoing issues with accountability in police-related deaths. The exact impact on municipal insurance premiums remains unclear. And a robbery investigation has led to the arrest of a Newcastle man. State police reported that back on June 25th, an employee of Royal Farms on Newcastle Avenue was punched by a man stealing items. The suspect fled the scene. Detectives identified the suspect as 31-year-old Adrian Owens. Owens was located on Wednesday in Newcastle. Police said that he struggled with troopers and repeatedly reached for the black bag. A bag contained loaded ghost gun and a large capacity magazine. Owens is being held at the Howard R. Young Correctional Institution on a $52,500 cash bond. He faces multiple felony charges, including robbery first degree and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. And Milford police responded to three separate incidents of people being shot with hard objects from a passing silver sedan back on July 12th between the hours of 10 and 11 p.m. Victims reported minor injuries from what was later identified as water pellets. The Milford Police Department's swift investigation led to the arrest of a 16-year-old male juvenile who was found with a water bead gun. Further investigation revealed the additional 17-year-old male juveniles were also involved. All three were charged with conspiracy, reckless endangering, offensive touching, and disorderly conduct. They were processed and released to their guardians with a future court date in Kent County Family Court. 
And now here with sports is our own Nick Alessandrini. Welcome back, Nick. Thanks, Matt, and I hope everyone is as excited as I am to have sports right back here on DETV News. Well, we are back in perfect timing to check in with some of our favorite local squads. Well, let's start with the Philadelphia Phillies, who at this point have the best record in the league at the MLB All-Star break. They are 62 and 34 here in the first half of the season, and they will be back in action on Friday night against the Pirates. But you can catch Bryce Harper and the rest of the record number eight Phillies in the MLB All-Star game tonight on Fox. So make sure you check out those fills tonight in the big game. Sixers, let's talk a little bit about them. They had the draft here just a few weeks ago. They selected the Duke guard Jared McCain with the 16th overall pick in the class. And the Sixers already in action in the Vegas Summer League. A tough 97-95 loss last night to Portland and Vegas. But McCain, he did finish with 11.7 rebounds and 3 assists. The Sixers also did add the big free agent of the offseason, Paul George, to the squad. So a big, big offseason for the Philadelphia 76ers. The Summer League going to go on here for another week or two. And then, of course, we'll start turning our attention to October. Well, the MLB draft was also held earlier this week, and we've got another Delaware player to the bigs. K Penn Lopens Luke Johnson was selected 290th overall by the Washington Nationals. The right hander was named the American East Pitcher of the Year back in 2023 and now has a chance to maybe suit up for the hometown Wilmington Blue Rocks at some point here in the future. So, congrats to K Penn Lopen and congrats to Luke on being drafted by the Nationals. We're going to stay local now with Natalie Radecki, the Caravelle wrestler who competed in the National Wrestling Championships in Fargo, North Dakota. Natalie competed in the 16U Women's Freestyle at 94 pounds and made the finals. A very close match, but what a performance by Radecki, who did lose that match in the finals. But she becomes the first Delaware ever women to have an All-American and first finalist ever in Delaware history. So what an offseason for Natalie Radecki. Again, Delaware's first ever All-American for women's and Delaware's first ever finalist. So congratulations to Caravelle's Natalie Radecki. And well, going forward, it seems that the University of Delaware will no longer be the site for our high school football state championship games. The high cost of renting the University of Delaware facility, which was at $71,819 last year for all of those three classes and the unified games has led to that decision. The DIAA, the Delaware Interscholastic Athletic Association Executive Director David Baylor, said during the DIAA board meeting of directors on the meeting last Thursday that we will be moving it around the state going forward. DSU was listed as a possible site, but sources say the university has not reached back out to the DIAA. So we'll wait and see where the championship games will be played. Will it be a local high school? Will it be DSU? We'll just have to wait and find out. Well, Matt, it was good to be back. And again, a lot more sports coming for you here the rest of the summer. But that's just a little taste to get you a piece of this week. Nick, good to have you back with us, my friend. Nick will be here every Tuesday night with us. So excited to have him. In more news now, hundreds more houses will soon arrive in the fast-growing area of north of Middletown and south of the canal. In a vote back on July 9th, the city council approved a new 674 home development called Monarch, located southwest of the town of Whitehall. This land has been designated for development for over a decade now. The new housing will cover a 546 acre plot along Ratledge Road, bordered by Crystal Run to the south and Lorewood Grove Road to the north. Initially planned as part of the village of Whitehall, the land is owned by companies tied to the Preston and Christopher Shell of Ocean Atlantic Brothers, as well as the Shell Brothers. And the Delaware Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control, also known as DENREC, has unveiled a new all-terrain wheelchair thanks to a grant from the Ford Bronco Wild Fund Access Grants and the National Association of State Park Directors. The Action Track Chair was presented on July 12th at Deerfield Golf Course. Due to the weather, unfortunately, the chair couldn't be tested on park trails, but Jared Towery, 20 years old of Dover, tested it in the parking lot nonetheless. The chair housed at White Clay Creek State Park aims to make trails accessible for all. To reserve it, you can call 302-368-6900. And the Newcastle County Chamber of Commerce held its State of the County event on Tuesday today, bringing together community leaders from residents and from diverse backgrounds to celebrate and build awareness about the growth of the county. Topics covered today included the latest developments in infrastructure and transportation to groundbreaking innovation projects. Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer was on hand to discuss county policies 
and plans for the upcoming year. He said, quote, it was my pleasure to join our friends at the Newcastle Chamber of Commerce to discuss the outlook for the upcoming year. He said it was a wonderful opportunity to discuss real policy that helps the people of Newcastle County. And the uh, owners of several Bardea restaurant operations here in Wilmington plan to open a full service Italian restaurant this fall inside the city's Deco Food Hall. The Nutritoria will join existing spots at the DuPont building. The new restaurant with about 70 seats and a full bar will occupy the seating area adjacent to the bar along Orange Street. Construction starts in July. Chef DeMeo is crafting a casual Italian menu. The new space will be designed by Philadelphia-based Stokes Architecture and Design. It looks great. That's going to do it for this edition of DETV News. Be sure to keep up with us all across your favorite social media platforms. And for a look at what's happening all around the great state of Delaware, you know where to go, DETVCH.com. And of course, if you have a comment, question, or a news tip, we want to hear from you. Email us at press at DETVCH.com. For Nick and all of us here at DETV, I'm Matt Ford. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. We don't talk about prostate cancer enough, and it's the most diagnosed form of cancer and the second most common cause of cancer death among black men in both Delaware and the United States. Approximately one in eight men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime, but just by asking your healthcare provider if you should get a screening could help you detect prostate cancer early and save your life. So let's talk about it. Talk to your healthcare provider today about a prostate cancer screening if you are 40 years of age or older, or have a family history of prostate cancer. If you don't have insurance, or if your insurance doesn't pay for cancer screenings, Screening for Life may provide you with the screenings that you need, and nurse navigators make this process easier. To learn more, visit HealthyDelaware.org slash prostate or call 211. Ask your healthcare provider about a prostate cancer screening, and you're asking for so much more. My name is Jason Avilez, and I am the founder and owner of Fly Yogi. And I'm here to share with you some tips to be able to help fight opioid addiction. Opioid addiction is a real growing problem here in America. And I'm here to share with you some tips that you can be able to integrate into your everyday life to really fight against opioid addiction. One of the first things is redeveloping your mindset. One of the practices that I like to use daily is meditation. And what meditation does is it, it brings you clarity of mind and it helps keep you grounded and it improves your ability to make decisions that you are going to benefit from. A lot of the time we find that addiction is rooted in our mindset. It's rooted in how we think and how we perceive and therefore how we act. So this is a really good way to help fight against that, that energy of, of addiction. The second thing is improving your lifestyle through diet and exercise. At the very root of addiction, there, there is substances within the body that's causing the addiction on a physical level. When we begin to introduce healthier foods, plant-based foods, we begin to remove and detox 
the substances that are in our body that's causing and attracting the addiction. So through incorporating more fresh fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, and even drinking water on a daily basis, you're gonna put your body in a state where it's going to be able to fight the root causes of these addictions. The second part is, is exercise. Exercise is good for mood, it's good for energy, it's good to increase vitality, it's good to get your, your, your heart pumping and get your blood flowing and get oxygen moving throughout the body. So through engaging in physical exercise, complemented by incorporating healthier foods, you're putting your body and your mind in a state where it does not want what's causing these things that are manifesting negatively in your life. So addiction can, can really be um, decreased by just incorporating a healthier lifestyle through diet and nutrition, exercise, and then also making sure that you're tackling the mind through mindset, through meditation. Mm -hmm.